So the swim, I do remember my mom, just my mom would just look at me and so I'd be all like. <laughs> it was my auntie Nita that just said, come on boy, work it. And I'd be all like. <laughs> As I got older and I started my formal dance training when I was 14, I heard that term again. So, Teddy, you've got the steps, but you need to work it more. So I was, took a step back and I said, what does that mean, work it? Does that mean I have to put more energy into my movement? Does it mean I have to be more animated? What does that mean? 
work it. Because as I got older, and just so you all know, I am part African American on my mother's side. So that's why they would be yelling, you know, at the parties when I got older, oh, word, 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 word. And I'd be all like, woo, woo, okay? I'd be feeling the groove, feeling the bass line, just get a little bit more animated. And then I had to take a step back. Fast forward now to me becoming a Toastmaster about 18 months ago. Now, relating back to this, I said, hmm. One of my dance coaches took me aback and just said, when you say work, it is about your delivery. It is about what you are delivering, the content that you've learned that you want to share with others. That's what it means, work. And when you say work, work it in such a way that it not only connects with your audience, they understand it, it reaches them, but more than anything else, they feel that. That is what my presentation is today, everybody. It's about talking about your presentation skills and how you can improve them in your everyday speeches, whether it be in a Toastmasters club meeting or if you are simply just talking to your family, talking to people. It doesn't matter. You can apply these techniques anywhere. So let's take a step back and look at our Toastmasters training. Now, we all know that it is all about preparing for a speech or presentation if you are going to be giving one. I think that's a given, correct? Yes. All right, so let's take that as an assumption right off the bat because I'm not gonna go into the whole thing of practice makes perfect, you should know your material. That's not what this presentation is all about. I'm going to focus on delivery specifically. Okay? I'm going to talk about the ways you can deliver the speech in ways that you can totally keep your audience engaged and hopefully still with you the entire time. Now, how many people have been to any type of class and seen a professor that just lost you from the get-go. Okay? You notice, because why? They didn't engage you, correct? Hello. Hello. And if they didn't engage you, why, didn't they, why were they not engaging you? Can anybody remember one of the worst professors that you had to deal with in school or any other? Yes. Give, give, give an example of what they did not do or what they did do. It was a Saturday morning class. Okay. And he spoke in a very dull monotone. And within five minutes, I would be sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you know what I call that? I call that the drone syndrome. There is nothing worse than the drone syndrome. <laughs> Because the people that suffer from this affliction, they have a tendency to talk like this. They never vary their speech pattern. Yeah. It goes like this. So next thing you know, by the time you're like maybe 10 minutes into his presentation, you're doing the head bob dance. Does anybody know what the head bob dance is? <laughs> yeah. See, some people tell me, they said, Teddy, I don't dance. I've never danced before. <laughs> Lies, lies, <laughs> lies. We've all done the head bob dance. And that's exactly what you just showed me. That's when somebody's talking and presenting, and you're like this, you're... <laughs> Which takes me to my first point, vocal variety. We talk about vocal variety all the time in Toastmasters, correct? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, with that being said, vocal variety can really make or break you. Now, what are the different things that you can do with vocal variety? Again, pitch, tone, repetition. All those particular elements are a great part of vocal variety. How many people saw Patricia Fripp speak this morning? Raise your hand. Is that lady not the master of vocal variety? She was pretty amazing. I really just enjoyed listening to her different pitches and tones throughout her presentation. So let's take a simple word 
What's a simple word that we use in our presentations to start off, right off the bat? Do you mean uh, example? Welcome. <laughs> okay, that's a good word. Great word. Um, like. Oh, um. <laughs> Sir, we don't do that at Toastmasters. <laughs> There's no such things as ums or ahs or filler words in Toastmasters. We got this. But I'm just going to say welcome. That's a great way to start. Okay. So let's give me an example of how you can use the word welcome effectively in a presentation. Just give me an example. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Give me another example. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Toastmasters. Welcome to Toastmasters. Okay, what is an important component of that particular word when you're starting off? What are some of the qualities that will engage your particular audience just with your first word? Give me an example of what, what kind of qualities would you look for? Energy. Energy. Wow, energy. There's nothing worse than welcome. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, here we go, man. <laughs> okay, the gentleman over here to my right, when he said, welcome, what does that say? It's automatically, you feel a sense of energy right off the bat, correct? Yes. What else about his welcome? Passion. Sorry? Passion. Passion. Absolutely. What else? Genuineness. Passion. Genuineness? What other qualities? Draws attention. Draws attention. Is it important to draw your attention in when you're speaking? Yeah. To draw your audience in? Absolutely. What else? Audible. Audible. There's nothing worse than, you know, than being the soft talker from Seinfeld to work <laughs> And all of a sudden you just you just see the lips moving. And then obviously you don't hear anything and you're just like, oh man. Okay, what else? Sincerity, absolutely. Your opening word, no matter what it is, needs to have energy, it needs to have an, a tone that is inviting, that is very clear to be heard right off the bat, and also, too, it needs to set the tone for the content of your presentation. Very, very important. So, let's take a step back and just say, if you don't deliver that, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your audience. So you're already at a disadvantage, correct? That's early on. And who wants to be at a disadvantage early on? What's another way you can engage your audience right off the bat in a presentation? Another example. A question. Okay. Let's give an example of a question. Give me an example that you've used in your presentations. How can you engage your audience? How can you engage your audience? Okay, let's do another one, just in reference to like a speech material content. Have you ever felt? Have you ever felt? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Excellent. What's have you ever been one? to a family reunion, you know, like a party? Yes, <laughs> like a party. Did you know? Did you know? Yes. Will you give me your money? <laughs> I like the way this man says, you know I'm a banker, so you know I love that. If you give me your money. I've got an opportunity for you. <laughs> I have an opportunity for you. Excellent, excellent. Yes? I'm going to talk about retirement plans. So what I initially do is ask the question, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when you hear the word retirement? And people throw out responses right away. Absolutely. Absolutely. So think about that question or that opening greeting statement. Make sure that it's definitely something that grabs the audience's attention. Patricia also covered that today in her speech. Make sure it is absolutely engaging. It's something that also to, that the audience can relate to right away. So my example of my presentation today, everybody's been to a family reunion party of some kind. Everybody's been around at least some kind of party that's just maybe a little wild, a little loud. And use that example as a way of setting the tone for your presentation. Now let's talk about body language. Patricia Fripp also talked about body language in 
her presentation today. I picked up a very valuable tip from Patricia today. I really like the fact that when you're referring to the future, for those of you that at attended the presentation, what is one way of doing that? To your left. What's way of acknowledging the past? To your right. What I find very interesting having a dance background is because the fact that body language is a huge part of how we communicate. Sometimes your body language can even override your words. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So let's talk about one of the common mistakes that I see whenever I see newcomers, especially new people that are new to Toastmasters about body language. When they're standing up here, Anybody see me? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right. When they're standing up here, there are some people that, because of shyness or nervousness, which is absolutely <coughs> valid when you're doing a public speech for the first time, you ever notice some people stand very much like this? <laughs> so this particular type of stance, what does that tell you right away? Lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. What else? Don't hurt me. Sorry? <laughs> Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me, right? <laughs> It's just like, what is that, what do they call that, that old-fashioned punishment? Are you going to stone me right now, man? Or, or tar and feather me? That's to be all like, okay, I'm ready. What else? What else does that say? Nervousness. Nervousness. And absolutely everybody gets nervous. I'm here to tell you that I've been on stage now, formally performing since I was eight years old. There is still times that I still get nervous. And that is a normal human reaction. We can't help that. In fact, there are times when I don't feel nervous, that's when I get nervous because I'm not feeling nervous. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, let's talk about now another, another stance that I also like to, that I see a lot of people do, and again, due to inexperiences, is the clasping of the hand. Yes. This. And next thing you know, I'm all like, wow. They're ready to make like shapes <laughs> and all this like that. So it's a nervous habit. So what is the result for that? You know, it is a very hard thing to do, but to just relax and keep your hands at a comfortable shoulders length and just letting it, or you can even actually bend your elbows here slightly. But this particular stance definitely is a little bit more inviting, it's a little bit more open, and it also invites your audience into what you are doing. Now let's talk about leg stance. When you stand here like this, what, what do you think of right away when your feet are together? Soldier, Soldier right? Salute! <laughs> Very stiff, correct? Okay, now let's go the exact opposite. What if you're standing like this? <laughs> How does that come across to you? <coughs> what is it? Unprofessional. Unprofessional, okay. You're kind of like wondering, what's the guy's deal? What else? Rigid. Rigid. No. Creepy. A little creepy. A little creepy? <laughs> I've, I've never had that response. <laughs> a little creepy, okay? What else? We are ready to run. What? Ready to run. Ready to run. I gotta, this is what I call my athletic coach stance. Because whenever you watch a lot of athletic coaches looking at their team and training their team, do you ever notice they have a tendency to stand like this? <laughs> And I have to tell you, whenever somebody stands like that in front of me, I'm all like, dude, he's getting ready to hit me if I don't do this. <laughs> but it's very confrontational. Yeah. That's the term I wanted to kind of get out, is that it's very confrontational. And the next thing you know, you're just sitting there just like, oh, I better deliver this man because if I don't, I'm, you know, I'm going to be in big trouble. Here's another example for a stance. So if you stand more shoulder, Shoulder width apart, again, just kind of on this particular type of line. Again, it's not, it, it does, it's like more of a, a non-stance. It's kind of neutral. And also comfortable. 
That's another example of, of body language. Bless you. Bless you. Let's talk about hand movements, because I talked about the clasper. I know that a lot of times, when some people are first learning how to speak, they have their hands, what I call a super glue position, to where they never move. <laughs> they never move. When, so when I'm talking to you like this, how do you feel when I'm talking to you like this and I have my hands just glued together like this? You're about to burst. Sorry? You're about to burst. I'm about to burst? <laughs> like, what's wrong with this dude? What else? Stiff. Stiff. Okay, very, very stiff. Now, how do you feel if I'm the exact opposite? If I'm talking so much that my hands are going mile a minute, and next thing you know, you're just like looking at me, and I'm trying to tell you that Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was light as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Do you know what I just said? No, why? Because of my hands? Distracting. Distracting. Just you know, I was able to work in some Madonna Vogue in there too. <laughs> Which is cool. So that's the exact opposite of the example. So you want to find a middle ground. You, find, you want to be able to, if you notice Patricia used different body language to illustrate. So the big one that I learned today was future and past. So what it does though, it should support your words, not distract from your words. Are there any questions about what I've covered so far? Okay. Now let's talk about, now how am I going to improve on this? Well, Teddy, you've given me all these great tips. Now how am I going to implement this and incorporate this in my everyday Toastmaster interactions, speeches, presentations across the board. Number one, rule number one, be willing to just jump in. And when I say jump in, a lot of times the biggest thing as a coach that I get asked about is that, Teddy, I just don't know how to just go. Sometimes, everybody, you just got to jump off the diving board and go into the pool. Because here's the thing, if you're on top of the diving board, this is the only way I can describe it, and you just look at the pool, and you just keep on going on top of the diving board, what's going to happen? Are you going anywhere? You're not going anywhere, right? There are times when you just have to jump in with both feet, no matter what. The beauty of our Toastmasters organization is that we are here to provide a mutually supportive environment for everybody, whether you've spoken for 10 minutes or whether you've spoken for 10,000 years. It does not matter. That's the beauty of that. There are times when just going is enough. Now, a lot of times people ask me all the time, but what can I do to feel that way? And a lot of times a big roadblock that I notice that a lot of people have, I'm not prepared enough. I'm not prepared enough. I need to be prepared more. So this is where we are all different as far as individuals. Because we're all different, we all prepare differently, we think of things differently. Find that rhythm for you that makes you feel comfortable and confident with your content so that you can deliver it with confidence and ease. So, is it an hour? I don't know. Is it a week? I don't know. What I ask and urge you to do is find a reasonable amount of time that you feel comfortable with your preparation so that you can deliver your speech with confidence and ease. Now, the biggest roadblock that I notice when I do put this out concept out is a lot of times people say, I don't feel I have enough time. Well, ask yourself, am I just overthinking it, or can I just go? And everybody's different when it comes to that. I know some people that can deliver a speech off the top of their head, 
and keep going. I know some people, it takes them a couple weeks. I ask yourself to ask you, what is your preparation time? It may be two weeks, and that's totally acceptable. So when you are preparing to give a speech, give yourself <laughs> that time. If you want to do well, how many people in this room have had to give a presentation to their manager in their current, current jobs? Normally, don't you know ahead of time when you're going to have to give that presentation? Sometimes? Okay, I'll give you that. Because sometimes, a lot of times, managers will say, hey, guess what? Susie Smith is out of the office. Teddy, I need for you to pinch it and give this presentation to the team. I totally get that. But on the norm, isn't it normally about two to four weeks that you know that you're going to be presenting in front of your team? I'm just going to say as an average, I know it's going to vary. So take that time. So what can you do to, to present that? Because it's important to know your content and be very comfortable with that so you can deliver it. I love the way Patricia Fripp talked today about muscle memory. Can anybody uh, tell me what she talked about as far as muscle memory today? Does anybody remember? Yeah. Yes. Her guitar playing brother. Her guitar playing brother. I'm dying to know who that is. Robert. Is it Robert Fripp? Yeah. Okay, I thought so too, but I, I did not want to make an assumption. I'm glad you answered my question. Okay, I digress. Another, another thing about muscle memory that she spoke about. So speaking of like when you're walking or on the treadmill, so it gets into your body. So, so it gets into your body. Right. What other, what other Practice. thoughts? Pardon me? Practice. Practice. Okay. Absolutely. So what's way, what are the ways that you can practice with the muscle memory in delivering your speech? In the mirror. In the mirror. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A lot of times I get people tell me, ooh, Teddy, isn't that a little narcissistic? You looking in the mirror and delivering your speech? It really is not when you're trying to do that because it's a great tool. What else? What's another one? Record yourself. And watch with the sound off. And watch with the sound off. She said to see that your body. Absolutely. And with our technology today, how easy is it to record ourselves these days? It's pretty easy. Now I'm here to tell you now, this is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> this exercise. Because when you videotape yourself and record yourself, you can really see the real deal. Because <laughs> I remember when I was taking a communications class at Arizona State University, I had to deliver a presentation. I had never seen myself on video delivering a speech. All I can say is, I looked at myself and I went, woo-wee! I am scared of me. And I don't mean in a good way. That is where you can use that tool as an effective tool to really, really gauge what you do. And why is that such a powerful tool, everybody? The art why do you think? Yes. Make Critique, Critique yourself. yourself. Make changes. Make changes. Build confidence. Build confidence. The best but feedback. Is the best feedback. Best feedback. Why is it the best feedback? Be more specific. Because you, you got also all the sudden stuff. You are your own worst critic. Yep. Yeah, exactly. What else? And you can see it over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely correct. You can watch it over and over again. But I'm going to just propose. Yes. I was just going to say basically is what you think or how you think you look is going to look a lot different than how you actually look. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. That's exactly right. I heard something else. Repeat. Okay, could you say it one more time? Yes. The way you think you look on stage, the way you <laughs> Thank wow. you very much. My name is Mr. <laughs> no, when you are on videotape, the way you think you look on stage, and then when you actually watch yourself on video on stage, is usually very, very different. So. I remember the first time I watched myself. Number one, the first thing that really rang out in my mind was my voice. Because I had no idea I sounded like that. 
And also they said, well, Teddy, is it because of your Brooklyn accent? I said, that's beside the point. But you just never know. Another thing is that it's a great tool to look at your body language to see what kind of body language you're using. A lot of times, you may have subconscious habits that you do that you may not even realize. And that is why that's also effective. Another reason why also that it's also a great tool is because you can see how you're utilizing your space. So Patricia Fripp talked about today in her speech about the use of space and movement. That again, when you're doing this and you're trying to deliver a speech, you think that you're really walking the room, right? But really you just look like a hamster in a wheel just trying to go around. And it's very distracting. Use of space. Another method to really check on your progress as far as how you're delivering is to get what I call a trusted mentor or associate to watch you. Now here's my caveats to doing this particular method. Make sure it's somebody that can really be objective. Because I know one time I tried that with my family. <laughs> it didn't work so great. <laughs> Because I'll tell you why, my mama was the typical mama just being the cheerleader. She just sit back and smile and she said, oh baby, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I just love. I just love. I just love hearing you talk. <laughs> my father, the exact opposite. He was like this to me the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and just doing the knob. <laughs> so I had no idea how to read him. <laughs> my see, my daddy's kind of the quiet one. My mom is the one that's really animated like me. And afterwards, my father, he just kind of threw me under the bus, for lack of a better term. <laughs> he said, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. And you're just sitting there just like, wow. <laughs> I feel the tire tracks on my forehead right now. <laughs> so when I say somebody that can be objective, I'm just going to suggest maybe a mentor at work. Maybe not your immediate manager, but maybe somebody, a senior associate that you work with that you really trust, or that you know will give you an objective viewpoint on your delivery of your speech. And then, but the most important one that I can't stress enough, like I said, it's not for the faint of heart, but for the, for the video, just like I'm getting video today. Now, what Patricia said to me today in today's speech really rang out in me is that, are all these tips gonna automatically just transform you into the speaker that you wanna be? Or is this an ongoing journey? What do you think? Ongoing. It's an ongoing journey. So, I want to tell you all, be kind to yourself. <laughs> Don't be uber critical of yourself. Because I learned this as being a dancer, that it's all about the journey and how you progress and how you make changes to evolve. And that's what makes it worthwhile. If we were able to do something right away and get it on the first try, let's say for instance I'm going to say, I'm going to teach you all ballet today. And you walked out of here dancing perfect. Would you appreciate it? No. Not really. Because if you got it right away, you'd be all like, boy, I got this. Uh-uh. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I don't need anything else. I'm good. But if you were to take class with me over a period of, I'm just going to say, eight weeks, and then all of a sudden you see progress, quantifiable progress. You see that, oh, I'm more graceful now when I move. I can balance. All of a sudden, that is getting back to what Patricia mentioned about specificity as far as evolving and seeing the results of your work. And that is what the journey all about here is in Toastmasters. And the beauty of our program here, everybody, is that we're here to support one another. We're here to be there for each other. We're there to, you know, cheer each other on. Very important to do. So give yourself that time. Give yourself that 
you know, that if you just say that, you know, this is where I, this is where I was, this is where I'm going. My grand aunt told me one time, and it was very, very, very important to me that I've never forgotten. She said, babe, it's not where you come from, it's where you're going. That is exactly what it's all about. And that's what the journey is all about. Are there any questions about what I've covered so far? <laughs> oh, we have a question. I am very impressed when I go to speak without, your voice, without any microphone. Could you is stand, you please? Your voice or you have both down your voice? Well, actually, though, I do have a voice amplifier behind me. No, I just didn't. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, the, uh, my voice, the reason why I can throw it so much is because I'm the oldest of five kids. <laughs> and so for those of you that are coming from a big family, you all know that when you have to get your parents' attention, and there are five of you, my mama told me one time, she said, son, I can hear you. You need to speak up so I can hear you. So that is where I learned how to do that. Also, too, when you are teaching kids in a dance studio <laughs> setup. I remember the first time I was like, okay, everybody, we're going to do this, and we're going to learn this. And they were just so noisy. And I just sat there, and I went, wow, they're not paying attention to me. I need to speak up. <laughs> and next thing you know, somebody said, my other dancers, you're from a big family. Don't tell me you guys can't be loud. And I'm all like, I can be loud. And that is where, that is where I learned that. Any other questions? What was the most uh, worst moment for you in the speaking, and what did you pull out of it? OK. Does everybody know of the aerobic format known as Zumba? Does everybody yeah. know? I'm a Zumba teacher on the side. Okay. So when I was hosting a Zumba party event, all of a sudden, as you know, music is an integral part to aerobics, correct? We were doing our presentation, and right in the middle of this particular song, the sound system exploded and blew up. So I was the MC. So the producer just looked at me and said, Teddy, you need to go out there or we're, we're going to lose these people. And you want to talk about imp the ultimate in improvisational exercise. <laughs> so what I did literally is I literally looked at everybody and I said, okay, we don't want to get cold, right? Come on, go on, get the beat, get the beat, get the beat, get the beat. And I started just wrapping up, wrapping up, moving up, moving up. I had to do that for 20 minutes. <laughs> That was the most frightening moment <laughs> ever. But like anything else, you just go with the flow. And that's when I talk about jumping in Do that. Yes, one more question. What is your approach to preparing your speeches? You talked about finding your rhythm. What is right. the rhythm for you? I, for me, like to use index cards. And I just like to write down ideas and points that I'm going to cover. I don't like to verbally write word for word what I'm going to talk about. Because I notice when you get too much into that, it becomes a script. And then when it becomes a script, if you forget, or if you have a, a brain, you know what? Brain freeze. That's where they go. I was looking at that. <laughs> you have a brain freeze, it's going to throw you off. Yes. So that is my suggestion to you as far as preparation. Are there any other questions? Okay, I would like to thank my facilitator, Carrie, my team, Clarice, and Sima, and then also Tim for videotaping here. So Tim has a couple, uh, a message for you all. These presentations are going to be available for free and online at my website, timsvideo.com. Patricia Fripp has also given consideration that she says we can post her stuff to this time, just as long as she gets credit. I do have some DVDs of the 8 Division contests available for sale, but that's another story. They will be also available for free and online. And let's thank this gentleman again for a nice lesson. Thank you so much, everybody. Like I said, don't be afraid to take a risk. Have a great rest of your day today. We'll see you next time. No, I'm kidding. What's your website?
I'm going to give you a card.